how cities can find money to help the homeless. Seattle City Council has voted unanimously to levy a tax on big businesses equivalent to $257 for each full-time worker starting from 2019. The increased tax rate will apply to business earnings earning more than 20 to $25 million in gross annual revenue. It's forecast to raise roughly $48 million each year, which the City Council intends to spend on affordable housing projects and services for the homeless. Councillors have lauded the tax as a way to have, uh, offset Washington State's regressive tax system, address homelessness and provide some affordable homes in the city where the median house price has raised, risen to $820,000. But many locals and activists were frustrated that the council did not bring in a higher charge of, for example, $500 per employee, which would have raised upwards of 75 million US dollars. As expected, the business community reacted by threatening to terminate key investment plans and look elsewhere for opportunities. When the $500 per employee levy was proposed, Amazon put its plans for expansion, which would add a further 7,000 people to its 45,000 strong workforce in the city on hold. And this is no small threat at a time when the retail giant is considering 20 other American cities to host the company's second headquarters. The vehement objections from both sides have caused something of a global stir over the tax, with some holding Seattle up as an example for other cities to follow. But these posturings mask the fact that Seattle City Council tax on big businesses is not actually a particularly radical policy. A more cynical reading of this story is that the rationale behind the tax hike is entirely political in a city where progressive policies win votes. There's a better way. The reality is that the extra charge being imposed on companies such as Amazon will not directly fund homelessness programs. As with other corporate taxes, revenues will be pooled with other receipts to fund an array of public services such as police, fire, roads, and infrastructure. But there are more effective market-based mechanisms than taxes if the aim is to fund affordable housing programs, homelessness initiatives included. In America, corporate linkage fees are a popular way of ensuring that affordable housing is made available as a part of new developments or other for-profit ventures that are not necessarily properly related. Linkage fees work on the premise that certain business activities can have harmful social impacts, such as displacement or overcrowded schools. As such, if a business wants to or undertake that activity, it should expect to pay a fee to offset the damage caused. These funds are then siphoned to a trust, typically dedicated to subsidizing affordable housing projects. Quote, in lieu of fees, and quote, in a similar way to facilitate inclusive zoning. In other words, a mix of affordable and luxury housing. These fees require for profit developers to set aside a certain proportion of units as affordable housing or to pay the cash equivalent of such to the housing trust. A similar mechanism exists in the UK in the form of planning gain. One benefit of funding public services with a fee as opposed to tax is that there is a clear legal precedent to do so, minimizing the risk of a lawsuit against a city by a company with deep coffers and a strong vested interest. Fees also provide transparency and accountability because there's a direct connection between the cost to society and the amount which must be spent. Taxes, by contrast, expose local governments to legal action and there is less transparency by the way taxes are spent, with no legal requirement for a proportionate investment in affected areas. In practice, this means that badly affected areas can suffer neglect 
and if there's no political incentive for the council to spend there. Facing the fallout, if Seattle City Council had opted to apply corporate linkage fees to non-real estate ventures such as Amazon, the case would have become more interesting because corporate linkage fees are premised on legally established establishing a casual link or a nexus between the business activities and the negative impact it has on society. It's very easy to see the connection between a large residential development and its impact on the local school system, or a large retail development and rising land values. But it's much more dubious to establish a nexus between the operation of a large employer such as Amazon and the gentrification which arises when a large, well-paid labor force is attracted to an area, even though councils have recognized that gentr gentrification can entail rising land values, displacement, and its most extreme cases, homelessness. Formally establishing such a connection would set a radical new precedent for local authorities around the world, but the legal quagmire involved in satisfying a nexus test in such cases would, spend, would send most public officials running for the hills. Besides, there are other mechanisms available to planners and city managers to leverage resources to fund social initi initiatives which are not so fraught with controversy. Social impact bonds, benefit corporations, tax increment financing, and business improvement districts, BIDs, are more palatable options being more compatible with the free market ideology. In fact, social impact bonds are a British invention and BIDs are already being used in city centers across the UK, US and, the, and Canada with some success. For example, in Scotland, Essential Edinburgh BID has established a partnership with local homelessness charity Kirinians to support rough sleepers. These planning initiatives, as well as linkage or in lieu of fees, could be effectively used to fund homelessness programs. These mechanisms provide a voluntary vehicle, not compulsory as in tax, to facilitate private investments in social good while minimizing the risk to local government. The alternative is simply to increase local corporation taxes and face the political fallout as Seattle City Council has demonstrated. This is on the conservation.